What we said last day was an exponential growth word problem used the same equation over and over a template. Now, Ryan, they may use different letters. In fact, in your homework, sometimes they'll say, oh, use an N instead of a T. Or I really don't care what letters they want to use. What I said, Matthias, was this. It's always going to be final amount equals the initial amount times whatever your growth constant is. If it's a percentage, it's 1 plus or 1 minus to the power of the total time divided by the growth period. I said you want to memorize that, Nathaniel, for your test. If you don't have that memorized for your test, you won't even be able to start these questions. There's going to be at least two, maybe three of these on your test. Okay. What I need you to do, though, is actually find a blank page. You can either go to the back of your book where there's a blank page, or you can do this on a separate piece of paper. And as a heading, all I've got is uh, some practice exponential growth word problems. And here's the first one. So as a heading, practice exponential growth questions, either on a separate piece of paper if you prefer your notes that way, or you can go in the back of your book as a bunch of blank pages. You can put it back there if you want to as well. I don't care. Whatever works for you. We're going to doing four of these. And you can copy out question number one. Question number one says the population currently has 230 million people. If the population is increasing by 7% every two years, how long will the population take to double? Population currently has 230 million people. The population is increasing by 7% every two years. How long will the population take to double? The first thing you have to be able to do here is to recognize that this is not a logarithmic scale question. This is not a pH, decibel, or Richter scale question. Because there is going to be one of those on your test. Words like increases, decreases, doubles, triple, words like that are your hints. This is an exponential growth word problem. And our first approach, we said, Kirsten, when we get this, we're going to write that templated equation. And we're going to do it on every question today. And hopefully by the end of that, you have it memorized. Katie, we're going to say, a equals A0, C to the power of T over P. And then we're going to list our data. This 230 million. What's that? Now, that's the initial population. I could write 230,000,000,000, but since they gave me the population in millions, I'll just put a 230, and my final answer will be in millions or whatever, like if, I, if they need me to find a population here. Um, hey, what are they asking me to find in this question? Final population, initial population, growth rate, total time, or growth period. What are they asking me to find here, do you think? What does how long mean? Now, how long can either be used for time. It can also be used for growth period. It's one of the exponent things. Let's pause and just remember that. That must mean they told me the other stuff. What's my final population? Oh, I forgot to put a zero there. What's my final population? Some of you are going, why didn't he put in a zero there? Initial, sorry, my bad. What's my final population? How'd you get 460? Because it says to double. What if it said to triple? I'd go 200, uh, 690. Okay. Okay. 
what's my growth rate, my growth constant? Well, increasing by 7% means, what am I going to put here? Do you remember? Nicole, one, my original population plus the 7% increase. Sorry? Isn't it what? Okay. Is that right? What if it was decreasing by 7%? It'd be 1 minus 0 0.07 or 93%, 0.93. And there's some other possibilities. We'll be looking at some of those today as well. What's this 2? Well, this is your growth period because it says it's growing every 2 years. What if it was every three years, my growth period would be three? What if it was every month, my growth period would be one-twelfth? Whatever, this is a decimal or a fraction or whatever. And they're asking me to find total time. So when I plug in numbers, Carson, I'm going to get final amount equals initial amount 1.07 to the power of t over 2. Now, the mistake that drives me crazy that I have to now stop and give you zero for the rest of the question is the kids that go like this. Oh, uh, I'm going to go... Two hundred and thirty times one point zero seven. Don't write this down. Oh, this is really four hundred and sixty equals uh, two hundred forty-six point one to the t. Oh, why is that such garbage? Is there an exponent on the one point zero one? Then don't you dare be multiplying before the e in bed mass. Complete garbage. Instead. Because you will almost always have a coefficient here, Katie, you always have initial population. Sometimes your initial population, Katie, will be 1, which is really nice, a little easier. We're always going to, on this line, divide by the coefficient. Four hundred and sixty divided by 230. 2 equals 1.07. By the way, this is going to give us a little shortcut. Next time, if they say how long to double, I could use 230 and 416, but can you also see I could use initial of 1 and final of 2. What if they said, how long to triple? I could use 230 and 690, or if I'm really clever, I can use an initial of 1 and a final of 3. Because when you divide, that's what you'll end up with. Anyways, a little shortcut. Amanda, where's my exponent sitting? Oh, where's my exponent? Where's my variable sitting? So how am I going to solve it? Darn right. Once you've written that down, I need you to look up because I need to beat a sloppy notation out of you to prevent you from making dumb mistakes. Every year, every year, Holly, I see some kid and it's clear that they're, I had a grade eight teacher that lovingly beat this out of me. They do this. Don't write this down. This is yucky. They write a fraction as two half lines instead of one top and one bottom clearly. And this confuses the heck out of them because they don't know what to do with that too. They oh, please. If you ever write a fraction like that, I'll freak on you. The T is on the top. The 2 is on the bottom. And just extend the bar. Write that down because now you've got clearly on the top step. You've got clearly on the bottom. And I'm even going to suggest that you all know what to do now. How would I get the T by itself? It's math 8. Yeah, it, in fact, I think I'm going to times by the 2 because it's dividing the t, yes? And I'm going to divide by the log of 1.07 because it's timesing the t and cross multiply. I think 
t ends up being 2 log 2 divided by the log of 1.07 which is what now go to your calculators having fun and wandering again. Usually that means I'm getting tired and need to move around. What do you get? Let's see. Whoop. Two log two divided by the log of one point zero seven. Now Let's decide, unless they say different, we'll go to two decimal places. 20.49. Almost 20 and a half years, bang on. Okay. Is that all right? Example two. Almost identical to example one except all I've done is I've changed how often it increases. A population has 230 million people. If the population is increasing by 7% every half year, how long will the population take to double? In fact, you probably use ditto marks for most of this question and just replace the phrase every half year. Kirsten, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to write that because i got to memorize a stupid thing anyways. I'm going to list my data off in the margin here somewhere. A equals you know what let's get really really clever let's try that shortcut because we know things are going to double I'm going to let my initial population be 1 and my final population be 2 because if I put a 230 and a 460 there Katie I get the same thing is that okay didn't lose you there you don't have to do that but you know I'm a nerd enough to like shortcuts my growth rate, Kirsten, is still going to be 1.07 because we're still increasing by 7%. They're still asking me to find T. But what's my growth period this time? Where'd you get the 0.5? You're right. Every half year. All right, let's plug and chug. Uh, final amount, 2 equals initial amount, 1, 1 1.07 to the power of t over 0.5. Is that okay, Holly? Again, do you have to do this stupid little shortcut? No, you could have put the 230 and the 460, but... It's kind of nice if they ask you double or triple. Use a population initial of one. Because now, technically, I would divide both sides by one. Holly, is that going to make any difference at all when I divide both sides by one? Then, Holly, where is my variable sitting? I'm going to take the log of both sides. And then I'm going to move the exponent to the front. Ah, but I'm not going to write it as a stupid small slanty fraction. I'm going to write it as a big two-line fraction. Extend the fraction bar.
the t by itself. Oh, I'm dividing by 0 0.5, so I think I'll multiply on the other side. I'm timesing by 1.07, I think I'll divide on the other side. I think t is going to be 0 0.05 0 0.5 times the log of 2 divided by the log of 1.07. I got 5.12. Yeah? 5.12 years. Big difference. 20 and a half years in the other question, just over five years in this question. Kind of a counterintuitive answer. This is why I said a lot of politicians, a lot of city planners, a lot, they don't understand exponential growth and how just changing a tiny thing makes a huge difference in your answer. Let's rank, let's ramp up the nerd component. Example three, radioactivity. Example three. A radioactive substance weighs 631.7 grams. What's the half-life of this substance? if there is 219.2 grams left after 19 days. A radioactive substance weighs 631 grams and it's decaying. That's how radioactivity works. Energy is being converted, sorry, mass is being converted into energy. And so the mass goes down when it gives off radioactive energy. There's a little physics lesson for you. Some of you that are in physics may have heard the conservation of energy law rephrased slightly differently. What is the half-life of the substance if there are 219.2 grams after 19 days? What is the half-life if there are 219.2 grams after 19 days? Hey Tyson, you know what I'm going to do first? Heck, why not? I'd like you to all underline the word half-life. This is how half-life is defined. If it's a half-life question, your growth rate is 0.5. It's a half. It's 50%. C is 0.5. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to expect you to remember that. But is there an easy trigger rate to, way to remember that your growth rate is 0.5? What words do we underline? And half as a decimal is? Woo! Okay. That means all the rest of it should be in there. What's the 631.7? I think that's what you're starting out with. What's this 219.2? Uh, final amount. And you'll notice your final amount is smaller because it's radioactive decay. Most common mistake, kids put the initial and the final in the opposite places. They get them mixed up. And then when they solve for time, they get a negative time. Nature is saying, actually, no, in the past you had that much. That's why it's negative. In other words, you'll know you've messed that up if you get a negative time. Now, what's this question asking me to find? What is the? OK, half-life is the period. This question, Katie, is asking me to find P. That means they must have told me T, the total time that's elapsed, 19 days. The tricky part is P is measured in days, half-life is measured in days, and T is measured in days. And so it takes a bit of practice of just reading the questions, Amanda, so you can tell what they want you to find, the half-life or the total time. And all I can say is I'm going to give you a bunch for practice, and you'll figure it out. But I can say if they ask you to find the half-life, that's a period. Let's plug in our numbers. Uh, 219.2 equals 
631.7, a half to the power of 19 over p is what we're trying to find. Now what? Yeah, now I made these numbers up, and so it probably won't work out evenly. Don't round off. I'm going to use the answer feature on my calculator to carry extra decimals. I would never round this off to two or three decimal places because it's going to introduce a lot of error. I would carry five or six. Two hundred nineteen point two divided by six hundred thirty one point seven. Now this is a fluke that we have all those zeros there, Holly. So I can round off probably to point three four seven and get a legitimate answer. But I'm still going to use the answer button on my calculator. I'm going to write point three four seven. But in real life, I should carry at least six decimal places because exponential errors. If you round off, the rounding off errors increase exponentially, so they make a big way bigger difference. Does that make sense? Got my little rant. So I'm going to write uh, 0 0.3. Oh, change colors. We can do it. 0.347 equals 0 0.5 to the 19 over p. Ashley, where's the variable sitting? You know what I'm going to have to do? What am I going to have to do if my variable is sitting in an exponent, folks? Log both sides. See how clever I was? I left a space after the equal sign to put the log in there. Ooh, smart, Mr. Good. Did I yell at you about writing proper fractions? Big fractions, not little smooshy smush small ones? Katie, this is where it really shines. I marked this question two years in a row on the provincial exams in the summer. And I saw a whole bunch of kids, don't write this down, do this. And they froze. They did not know what to do. Or, Ragjeet, I'm going to suggest if you don't write that as a smooshy, slinty fraction, but if you clue in, that's on the top and that's on the bottom. Hey, I'll put the over one there just this once, but I'm going to it's grade 8! On cross multiplying. Right? Physics 12, you can use stuff moves diagonally. You're going to get P log 0.347 equals 19 log 0.5. You're going to get P equals 19 log 0.5 divided by the log of 0.347. What's the half-life of this substance? And you notice again, I'm using the answer button. You get 12.44. So this substance loses half of its mass every 12.44 days. So after 24.88 days, it'd be one quarter as big. Half-life. I almost guarantee, in fact, I will tell you, there's going to be a half-life question on your test. It's going to be probably two word problems, Roxanne. One of them is going to be a half-life. The other one probably going to be population. One more. Example four. A radioactive substance has a half-life of 7.4 days. How long until only 5% of the substance remains? A radioactive substance has a half-life of 7.4 days. How long until only 5% of the substance remains?
I would do two things right away. Ashley, while I stand in your way, I would underline the word half-life. That's going to tell me something important. It tells me C. But even before that, Ryan, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, still writing. My bad. Ryan, what am I going to do first? Yeah. A equals A zero C to the T. Come on, Ben. Over P. All righty. Oh, half life. Mr. Duick says I know this. What's that seven point four? Uh, Carson, what? It's the half-life, and I said the half-life is the period. This time they've given us P. P is 7.4. Okay. What's that 5% final amount? You see, I'm kind of going process of elimination here, right? I'm, I'll look at the numbers, figure out what those are, and then I'll fill in the blanks. Uh, final amount is as a decimal 0.05, because that's what 5% is. Hey, take a guess. What percent did I start out with, do you think, as a percentage? 100%. If they ever give me a question and they're talking about percentages, now i got to distinguish between there are percents in this question, Steph, but there was also percents in number one and number two. Can you see there in number one and number two, though, the percents were clearly a growth rate. Here, the percent is clearly an amount, and I can't teach you how to recognize the difference between the two. All I can say is read carefully. Anyhow, I think my initial amount is 100%, which is what is the decimal, Andrew? One. Which means I think when they say how long this time, it's T. Not how long is the half-life period. How long is the total time? T. How long until? Is that all right? All right, let's plug in what we got here. Final amount, 0 0.05. Initial amount, 1.5 to the T over 7.4. Try solving this on your own. I'll do it slowly up here.
you get just shy of 32 days, 31.98 days. Yep. Half-life questions. Half-life question with percentages involved. Can you turn now, go back to your workbooks, page 206, page 206. Page 206, example 7. Page 206, example 7. Now, we're talking about radioactive iodine from Chernobyl. In page 206, example 7, um, it's talking about radi radioactive iodine-131. That 131 is not a mass or anything like that. It's, it's the atomic number, like uranium-236, but you're not going to use that in the actual question step. It says this, in April 1986, nuclear accident at Chernobyl contaminated the atmosphere with quantities of radioactive iodine-131. The half-life is 8.1 days. Determine the number of days to the nearest day it took to reduce to 2% of the original level. Very similar to number four that we just did. So try this one on your own. I'll freeze the screen and I'll do it up here. See if you get what I got. Yes? No? Yes? Final amount point zero two, initial amount one, hundred percent. C is 0.5, P is 8.1. Ask me to find T. Is that okay, Roxanne? Oh, sorry, still working. Nodding. Yep. Okay. How else can they mess around with this? What else can they ask? Take a look at example five at the top of the page here. Patient feeling ill had a sample of bacteria taken from her throat. 
Say ah. Ah. Oh. The sample contained 387 bacteria cells. 24 hours later, the sample was carefully recounted, and it was found to contain 8,012 cells. Find the doubling period to the nearest tenth of an hour. Katie, you know what I'm going to do first? Ah, sure, why not? I feel better. It's no longer blank. It gives me a systematic approach. I'm going to go A equals A0, C to the T over P. Now, Katie, this is a bit of a tricky one. Some things are obvious, I hope. Katie, can you tell me what my initial amount is? Yep. And what's that 8,012, Katie? I think you're right. I couldn't hear. Yep. Do me a favor, folks. Underline the word doubling period. And what they're telling you in this question by saying doubling period, they want C to be 2. What if they said tripling period? They'd want your base to be? What are they asking me to find in this question, by the way? Find the what? Amanda. OK, so I'm going to write down P equals question mark. That means, Amanda, they must have told me time. And this one's a bit tricky because there is one more number that appears in this question. However, it was written out in English, not written out like numbers. What's the total time elapsed in this question? Kirsten, 24. So the equation that I'm going to end up solving, kiddo, solving, kiddo, is 8,012 equals 387 times 2 to the 24 over P. What am I going to do first before I do anything else? Divide by? OK. You get 20.7028, blah, 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 blah. I'll write 20.7, but I'll use my answer button on my calculator. Leah, where is the letter P sitting? Exponent. So how am I going to solve it? Take the... Log both sides. Yep. Uh, hey, I can fit a schmoosh log in there, and I can fit a log in right there. And I'll get this. The log of 20.7 equals 24 over P log 2. Is that okay? How do I get the P by itself? I think P is going to end up being 24 log 2 divided by log of 20.7. Oh, hang on. Don't use 20.7, Mr. Duick. Use your answer button. Do you get just shy of five and a half days? Oh, what does it say? To the nearest tenth of an hour? 5.5 hours? So every five and a half hours, this population doubles. At 11 hours, you'd have twice as much. 
16 and a half hours, you'd have uh, twice, four times as much. Okay. Now we also need to look at a couple of more weird things. In example six, it talks about changing the base. We're going to look at that next class. We're also going to look at why base E is much nicer to use as our base. This is where base E really shines. That's going to be next day for today. Giving you lots of time. I already said try numbers one and two. You can try number three. Number four, but can you all look up at number four, please? There is a typo in number four. Instead of 2,000, can you make it 20,000? Put an extra zero on it, please. Otherwise, you can't get the answer in the back of the book. You'll be a decimal point out, and you'll be freaking out, and I wouldn't want you to ever have to freak out, at least not in math. Five is good. Five, you have to think about the answer a tiny bit, because you'll round the answer a certain way, and they won't, and you'll say, why? But then you'll go, oh, because you're clever. Six and seven are for later because they're base E as is eight base E. Well, I like number nine. I like number ten. Eleven is good. Twelve is good. Thirteen is good. Fourteen is good. I'm going to temporarily pause there. Now, that's not all for homework because next class I'm going to be continuing with today's lesson. It'll be about half an hour or so. Then you'll have class. I'll assign a couple more questions from here. I'll also be giving you a take-home quiz on Half-Life and Richter scale and word problems. But, boys and girls, you have the remainder of class to work on your own. You don't often get this much time, so enjoy it.